What's up, everybody? Um, I already told uh, on the training last week, I said that I was quickly going to explain the M stations and tech plans and biolabs in the video because otherwise it would stretch the training too far. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. Uh, obviously, uh, it's going to be a little bit different for the M stations because you have several different M stations nowadays. Uh, Actually, I still don't know every single one out of the top of my head which base is like the original A point, like the Hakka, for example, where I am uh, right now. Uh, but let's start with this one, because in my opinion, these ones are the hardest to take, because you just have one point, you need those two shields down, or you need GSD Sundays. Uh, so let's start with that. Let's, let's start with the most basic thing that you could do when you run like a, a platoon or a public platoon, doesn't really matter. Um, if you, right now I'm talking about attacking it, so what you really need is to start off are GSD Sundays. So you can like put three squads in there. You put three squads in three GSD Sundays. Uh, make sure that those Sundays have uh, composite armor on. Uh, also make sure that uh, most of the crew that is going inside with you are engineers. Um, if the first GSD Sunny comes in, it's actually handy to have mine guard on it because most of the time the enemy will put mines along this line. Um, so if you don't have it, boom, you just lost a squad and they cannot be revived. So ma make sure you take that in account. Either you already know that there are no mines, or make sure that you have like mine guard or something on the first Sunday only. Um, otherwise, they're going to be too weak. Now you have like this wall here, you can easily place uh, two Sundays next to each other here. Um, the other one can be overlooked, if one of them for example is a repair sun, then you can place the other one right here and it can watch down their spawn room because we all know that the old SCU room is now the actual spawn room uh, in this kind of ham station. And then you got the A point. Now the fourth squad you're actually going to use to overload the generators. Obviously you only want to overload this generator and you want to overload that generator. You do not want to overload the vehicle generators. I mean, unless you really got nothing else to do. But they're not important. Um, once holding the point, there, there are some very important things that uh, people must do. Obviously you got your Sundays downstairs. You need an infiltrator to hack these terminals so you can spawn like an arrestor with a fury on it. Or uh, you can even get them upstairs here but that's a little bit tricky and I'm not going to explain that here. Uh, but you could also get a flash with a fury or a flash with a cobalt and then you can basically station it here on A overlooking that shield. Also, in this M station, they can now come in from this side, from the back. So it would not be a bad idea to put like two engineer turrets here, not too close to the gap, though. Otherwise, they can get C4. Now, if the shields are down, uh, it it's actually better to have them up, to leave them up, because that means that they cannot shoot your Sundays from the outside in. They would actually have to get through the shield, etc. Um, but if you are attacking this and you're defending the A point, it's actually a really good thing to have an infiltrator watch between these tunnels, watch over it when the uh, generator is down. Because he can just quickly go upstairs, cloak, check if there's a rush coming in from the spawn room. And I will show you in a minute why that is important. Uh, and he can immediately give you feedback. He can also play some bouncing baddies. And then you can already station some light assaults here with C4 who can sit on top of these little containers. And as soon as that max crash comes in or whatever, you just blow up that C4 and you kill half the Zerg instantly and the rest can be finished off by the engineers and whatever is running around here. Uh, well, so you got your flashes watching this door, but of course also an NG with a turret would be nice. And of course you got the conventional, uh, conventional counter attack which basically comes from the stairs. Now on this corner you basically want to have a heavy with like a 100 magazine, so you just keep scaring them off, keep scaring them off. Whatever is actually coming up, most of the time it will just be infiltrators. Only when a really big push happens, uh, that is when the Zerg basically comes. And most of the time they will nowadays, if they're like Trident for example, they will come through the roof. They will not come through the SCU room anymore. So that that's something to, to, to take in account. Um, now I'm going to tell you why it was so important, because this M station has the SCU in where originally the spawn building was. But I also know that there are still M stations with the old base design, so that this is actually still the spawn room. If that's the case, one of the best tactics to use to uh, to defend your point 
is to as long as you're not overrun by air but if you go upstairs you have these jump pads here and a lot of people don't know about them but if you use them boom you get straight on the A point and in this case you're straight on the A point but on the old base design the one that I'm talking about you actually should not go that that one because then you will get to the vehicle bay and you can get farmed by f furious you have to actually walk all the way around and the important thing is that you need to do this quickly if you don't do this quickly you'll be on a radar way too long and you give the enemy the chance to improvise and to quickly set up defenses facing the other way so you go down these stairs and then you take this elevator and it takes you right to the A point and you catch him by surprise if you're really organized you can have like two squads in this side and two squads on that side and then attacking from both sides but you have to be careful that you, you're not gonna friendly fire each other so watch out with the rockets watch out with the grenades and stuff like that but as you can see there's a lot of ways to take an M station and and this is like uh, just one out of the three designs that there are so this is the first design the old design basically with the SEU in the spawn room then you got the oldest design where you see the SU right now uh, on the squad waypoint or personal waypoint where that is still a spawn room and then you got the other ones which we of course all know uh, like Zerv and M station that has like the three points like A is there B is there and C is there now how do you take those for example very simple A point you need A point A point is the most important one to have it gives you a spawn point right there which brings you close to B and C if you have B for example you will spawn in the south if you have C you will spawn in this building and as you can see then you need to travel like 150 to 200 meters to the A point and you have to go through the whole Zerv and M station to get to either point even to your own point where the A point is very close to everything so you want to have that A point and from that A point you can build up that, that's basically the point so if you have a platoon I would definitely say put two squads on A one on B and one on C and make them dedicated make sure that those people actually really go towards those points instead of just fapping around on the walls and stuff like that the walls are like not important anymore uh, nowadays in, in the M stations where in the old days they kind of were because you could use the tunnels to get to your generators and stuff like that which is actually what I'm going to show you now on this M station you still have that so now we're going to talk quickly about defending this the first thing of course you need engineers. You need engineers to put mines. You'll be surprised how many kills you will get just by placing like three mines here, three mines on the other side and put like another two like here in the middle. And every time when it blows up, immediately replace those mines. You're close to the spawn room, you can easily resupply and you can keep those you basically you should have like one engineer with utility pouch and just keep one engineer trained to do that. It would also not be a bad idea to have like uh, an arrestor here with like a, a halberd and an arrestor with a fury. So in case there is a successful GSD, then you can always respond to it and you can already kill half half of them before they even reach A. And then in the meantime, your the rest of your team can basically come back to A to quickly defend it. Now for the generators, which is of course the oldest way on how an M station is taken you need to kill the generators now what a lot of people still don't know and I see this a lot especially with the randoms they have no clue that there are tunnels they don't know like you spawn here obviously this is the old SCU uh, way you got up out of the tunnel but you can also go in and then you just need to quickly figure out okay to the west is one generator to the east is the other generator and you're done so you can just quickly go to this generator for example and you get your entire squad you know that the generator is down for example you make sure that you have an infiltrator here that puts like a motion dart or whatever boom you're straight on the generator you quickly repair it you place two bouncing baddies and you go towards the next point it ain't that hard and this is how you can easily defend an M station with only 40 percent population the only key that you need is teamwork you need a good leader that that keeps on chatting with the people like okay now we're gonna go here now we're gonna go there as soon as someone doesn't listen mention it to him if he doesn't know I don't know where you guys are well redirect him to this video you know I'm explaining pretty well I think on how, how you should do this um, also uh, don't have too many engineers uh, if you have too many engineers and there's one lucky grenade and you're you're all gonna die and you don't want that obviously now there is an also an additional tunnel which is this one and this one takes you quickly to the SCU so in, 
if you, for example, have saved A, but the SU is still overloaded and they're actually defending it, trying to blow it up, that's that's the tunnel you use to quickly get to the SU. In the new base design, basically. Uh, in the uh, newest base design with the ABC point, you obviously don't have that. Uh, I'm trying to... I don't think I have to explain the three point M station like Zervin. That should be self explanatory. Like two squads on there, two squads or one squad on B and one squad on C, and you're done. The rest can be done by randoms. You cannot drive a Sun in as easy uh, anymore. And it's actually pointless to do a GSD suddenly rush towards the center. It, it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, it's really just about the points. Uh, there's a couple of things that you do need to watch on this M station. That's the M station itself. You need to check the roofs of the M station. Uh, there's going to be a lot of snipers there, uh, especially on the points like uh, like C and A, which is uh, this one, this is C, and this one is A. It's it's in the open, so snipers can have a nice little farm if you're not careful. So make sure that, uh, that you try to stay close to buildings, and if you have the chance to have like a battle galaxy, for example, or a liberator, Make sure you tell those liberated crews to focus on the roofs to, to keep the infiltrators away because they can really do a lot of damage if you're not careful. Don't underestimate infiltrators. So yeah, that's definitely the biggest thing. Uh, also, know the spawn points. Know where they spawn. If you know that they have C, for example, then you know that they will spawn here. If they have B, they will spawn this little building here. If you got A, you will spawn right here where the old SCU entrance is. They, all, of course, even if they lose every point, they still have this central spawn point. But that is a stupid spawn point. It's fucked up and it's hard to defend from. So once you lock them in into that three pointer, most of the time you will win. Unless they bring a sunny close to the wall or something like that. But if you need more explanation on this particular type of uh, M station, then feel free to ask me. Uh, I'll definitely uh, give you an answer then. Um, uh, for now, I quickly want to do the tech plan and the bio lab still uh, so this covers M stations which is actually in my opinion the hardest one to take so bio labs I can actually be let, let's do that one because that's like the easiest one it, it, I can be very simple about bio labs and unfortunately that's because of the design of the bio lab and how they made them more and more uh, noob friendly it's Zerk that's, that's all it is it's Zerk that's what you need to do, Zerk. I mean, a tactical squad can still make a, a big difference, true enough, but in the end it's all about the Zerk. Uh, like we saw uh, yesterday during the ops uh, with the alert Mani Biolab, people were dividing themselves between Anvari and Mani, and I told Reef from 709, I said, dude, if we just pull all our forces together, they, they can't hold it because we had overpopulation in Nesimir, and that's what you need. Because a lot of tri people say, oh, Trident is good, Trident is organized. Yeah, it might be true, but in the end, Trident does exactly the same. They come in with five or six galaxies, they drop so many fucking people off that it's almost impossible to quickly set up a defense. And that's how they win. And I think that we should implement that too. It, it clearly works. And I don't care if in Yell Chat they call you a Zerg fit or whatever. If it helps you win alerts, that's good. So, okay, we're in the biolab. Unfortunately, it's very dark. It's a little bit crappy, but I'll, I'll show you, uh, instead of telling you the basic things like which generator is best, which I of course will do, but I want to actually talk more about like some of the uh, more advanced biolab play and something that a lot of people forget like uh, light assaults for example or the, the role of uh, an actual sniper in the biolab. Not every infiltrator needs to have an SMG in a biolab, you can actually do it with an NC bolt driver or the long shot. Not so much the real jack because it's a piece of shit, but uh, know, know, know the generators, know, know the uh, teleporters, know where they go to. Uh, if, if your biolab is about to be attacked, know where the teleporters go to. It's very important. And also, because of the new base designs, you can actually defend the biolab by not spawning on the biolab. I'll explain this later. Um, right, so when, when you are attacking and you are in this one, the first thing you need to do when we look on the map, uh, we we call this the banana building. What I'm doing now with my mouse. That's the banana building, basically. It's very important to take that. Not to hold it, but you need to move your zerg through it. And then once you do that, then some randoms can basically cap it. So what you really need to do is you run straight out the door. You take this elevator. A lot of times on that ridge there, 
there will be defenders with engineer tours and stuff like that. If you know that they are there, instead of just Zerg and here, yeah, the Maxis can do that because it can take a lot of damage, but the normal infantry can't. So what you need to make sure is that you have, for example, two light assaults to your squad. You give the call, the light assaults go out, they instantly use their jetpacks to get upstairs without them seeing you. They come up with their shotguns right behind them. Done. That's already a distraction. They might not make it, but it's a distraction. At the same time, you can rush in with your Maxis through this door. And then you could have the rest of the infantry actually move through the back door. So that the turrets, if they're still functional on top of that stairs, are focused on the maxes that are going through the elevator. While the infantry can just quickly throw a grenade or something. Or quickly run up these stairs. And take, yeah, two or three of them will die. But that's why you got medics. And boom, you got the whole building cleared. Maxes keep going over that, over that walking pad basically. The infantry keeps on this one, so they will ba the, the Maxis will get the most of the hurt, while the infantry is basically unscathed, gets into this building. Infantry moves around, Maxis crash right through the, the, towards the generator, Maxis give the word that the generator is clear, and boom, you go in and you overload the generator. Simple as that. If you have a full platoon, you make sure that you have three squads downstairs, so you basically have one squad on this stair, overlooking those two doors. Don't stand too close to the doors, especially not with Maxis, because you're basically putting extra strain on your engineers. And then you got one squad divided basically up here guarding that door and defending the generator, throwing grenades outside, stuff like that. It's a bit overkill, but it works. It, it's better than to have two squads upstairs in my opinion. And then you have one squad who is really just dedicated to guarding this room so you do not get attacked from behind. Plus, they can make a nice line of fire of whatever is coming out of the spa room to try and reinforce A or to try to get to the Jenny room, stuff like that. That works really well in this uh, in this biolab now. Also, what people forget, they, they stay often on the point, right? Because B is kind of hard to keep because you, know, you need to divide a squad. But in the f at first you should really just focus on the generator. Once you get the generator you get C. Then you can also get B. A is actually the bitch to get. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, the C building. Very important. Let's talk about that now. Careful with it. Why? It has a big door. It has a window. A lot of times infantry will sit around this corner. And basically sit here and chuck in grenades. All the freaking time. And then at one point you get the inevitable max rush. Never have more than one squad in this room. It is, it it will kill you so fast. If you have too many people in here, you are only going to attract more of those nades, and your medics cannot keep up with it. Plus, most of the time when people die, they need to reload their weapons, so you get this spiral of, of like dying, trying to reload your gun, dying again. It's it's pointless. So only have one squad. Have a guy at this window. Who is going to cover that? Now I know it's a bit hard to see now, but cover that door, which is right outside the spawn room. Then you have one guy basically just sitting here, looking around here. Another max unit, just an infantry. Maxes need to stay a little bit in the back and need to have like room to maneuver so that they can avoid anti-vehicle grenades until the actually actual rush comes. Now to defend the C building, there's actually two good spots that a lot of people don't know about, and also the enemy doesn't know about, and that's right here. Now, now they implemented these walls w when they changed the biolab, right? So here you got like the wall next to you, so that gives you protection. You got like uh, the, 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 the the root of the tree right here, and you can just sit here while they're trying to attack that C room. You can just sit here, snipe them off with a uh, light machine gun, heavy machine gun, doesn't really matter. You can even move a little bit like this. It's easy. And the funny thing is it will be very successful. Why? Because they are so focused on that sea room rather than where you're shooting from. Especially if you use like a suppressor or a flash suppressor or something like that. They will not notice you. Another spot which is important for the, the sea building is this spot right here. As you can see that it's impossible for them to shoot me from, uh, from the north side. And what can I do from here? I can basically keep an eye on the Jenny room who goes in there and shit like that. And if I move a little bit forward, I can keep the SCU safe. And they cannot shoot me. Unless they really actively try to hunt me. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, of course, uh, light assault play, in my opinion, is very important in the biolab. Uh, the tree, for example, can be used quite nicely with like a, a Razor GD23. Uh, that's a good weapon for a light assault on range. Uh, some say the NS11C, but I think it's a piece of shit. 
Um, the AF-19 mercenary is a good weapon as well uh, for on the roof. Of course you got your standard roofs and the, the spawn camping roofs and all that stuff, but I'm not so interested in that. I'm really looking for tactical position for a light assault. And of course the center bit right here is also one. But you need to be careful because once you kill two to three people, they will know you're here and you need to relocate. Otherwise you're just going to get farmed. At the point where you got the generator overloaded and you're about to overload the SCU, for example, what you really need to focus on is you leave a squad around the Jenny room and the C building, and the other two squads, sh they should not necessarily push for A. They should actually push for this building, right outside the spawn room. Because this is where they gather, and you can chuck in grenades. You will get a lot of kills if you surround this building. And it's hard for them to uh, counterattack you, because they would have to come from this side from their spawn, of they will come from the building or they will have to go all the way around towards the tree and they will come from that side most of the time they will already be intercepted there from the sea point so it's a perfect position and they cannot really throw grenades at you while you can spam them with grenades all you want you basically surround the spawn room and you deny them every, any chance of uh, defending their own biolab so that's a quick you on how to take a biolab it's not so much about the max crashes anymore. It's not so much about uh, just just overloading the Jenny. I mean, yeah, it's it's really really important, but I think light assaults play a more important role uh, than a max in a biolab sometimes, especially with the C4 and and the, the capability of taking out people before they even reach the point. And I see other factions use that a lot, I just don't see the NC use light assaults as often. Maybe that is because a lot of people are just not proficient with it, or I think an engineer or medic gives them more points, I don't know. I really u like to use my light assault a lot, uh, along with my infiltrator as well, and then not with the SMG actually, I'm, I'm not one of those SMG fags. Um, but when you're defending a biolab, the light assaults are even more important because they can, they can see a Zerg coming right away and they can immediately report it to the squad leader and tell it where it is coming from so you can prepare the defense. Defense should always be concentrated on the generator room. That's the most important one. If you lose A, it doesn't matter. They're basically stuck there. They can't go anywhere. Um, if you lose the generator room, you got a problem. Um, if that happens, what do most people do? They come right through this door, they get farmed by the people who are on top of the stairs, uh, to the people that are hiding around this corner, shit like that. Let the randoms basically die at this door, make use of it, don't show yourself, but when you come out of the spawn room, take this route, go through C, and then use the back door. That's the most important one. You have your max staged here, the infantry will actually keep walking towards this door, so that they can snipe the people on the stairs while the maxes are dealing with the maxes downstairs. This is like a perfect teamwork opera operation right there. If they have that uh, teleporter room right there, then obviously you also need to redirect some people, light assaults preferably, to basically sit here, or you can actually sit on top of that roof, although I do not know if that's really functional as a defender, um, but it works. Also, use the terrain, really, use the terrain, sit on these things. A lot of people forget that, that, that it's possible, or like even the most stupid thing, like, like well, that was possible, come on. <laughs> well, now, yeah, I know. Well, it, you, it does work, I just need to get it right, I guess, but... <coughs> <coughs> yeah, there you go. Like this spot, for example, who will look here? Almost no one. No one looks here. Why? Because it's unconventional. It's something different than what people normally do. Uh, try to be creative about your positioning as a light assault. You don't always have to be on that roof, you know? And uh, you saw me do it there, and then you can also probably do it here. It's just this simple stuff, like sitting here. No one will see. No one will notice. It will always be too late. You will kill them before they reach it. Be creative with a light assault. It's important. Like take these beams for example, if you know the rush is coming, set yourself up there, throw yourself a C4 right there, the Zerg comes in, you boom, you blow up three maxes, any medic that tries to revive him, you kill him. That's how you do it. Now let me talk about uh, a little bit more advanced tactic basically. Now let's say that uh, the enemy has uh, Sarva Fortress. Sarva South Fortress and they use the jump pad a lot so that means that they come in there uh, let's go there and I'll show you something 
a lot of people just they, they think so inside the box where, where they don't need to they, they should think outside the box definitely and I'll show you why and I used to do this a lot at the lot in biolab and I got so many kills doing this so they will come in on this jump pad and they will basically do what they always do right they camp here uh, and they try to get some pot shots and everything and it's hard to kill them especially if they have more air than you do but if you look this jump pad takes you to this base if you still have this base park a sunny right there so they are attacking from Sarva South Fortress, but you still have Sarva Overflow, for example. That means that both jump pads from both bases will end up on the same air pad. What happens if they are Zerg in here? They are completely focused on what's going on in the bio lab. They will not take notice of this air pad at all. You could really get a squad of Maxes and a squad of engineers with like two medics, use the jump pad simultaneously on a countdown. And you can clear that entire air pad before they even know what's going on. It's so easy to do. You just need to be a little bit creative. That's it. And boom, you've cleared this way and then you can focus on taking their base. You, If you want to keep momentum and you keep your maxes prepared, you can quickly go to the other jump pad. You basically go towards theirs. You blow up a Sunday if there is. If there is not, you rush straight to the A point. Let them try and capture it back. Try to stall them. Try to demoralize them. And that's what works. Don't pull tanks to kill that son. You can just do it with infantry. Every time in the bio lab someone pulls a tank, you're actually hurting your team more than you're helping it. Now, of course, in Sarva, and like there's one other bio lab, I think, one of the points is actually below. If you need to go below, you just need to go back to the spawn room. You take the teleporter in the spawn room, which is actually what a lot of NC forget at any base, that most bases nowadays have teleported to take you to a secondary protective spawn. So this teleporter takes you straight downstairs to the vehicle bay. You basically look where D is and you're going to go there. And there is D. You take it, you get like half a squad. Most of the time that's enough. You kill the Sunny at the wall if it's necessary. It, it's simple. It's it, In a 50-50 situation, in no circumstance, the enemy should be allowed to capture a biolab. And even when they have 60%, if you use your light assaults, if you use your infiltrators, don't overdo it with the medics and the engineers. Get good max players, and you can hold a biolab indefinite, and you will get a great farm. It, it really is one of the best farming simulators in this game, especially during a double XP weekend. Don't camp the spawn room, sort of let them come out, because in the end, it will be better for you. It really will. And again, just like with the M stations, if you got any additional questions or you want to know more specific positions for light assaults, uh, or what should I do as an infiltrator in a biolab, feel free to ask me. Uh, you know what team speak I'm on. Uh, you can also contact me in the NC forums. Um, but yeah, this is just really the basics of the biolab. It's very simple, in my opinion. But then again, I, I fought a lot in biolabs. I love biolab fights, especially as a light assault. And when I was lower level, I loved it when I was a medic because it was easy XP. So, and now I wanted to quickly do the tech plant. And I know that this video is getting a little bit long. and But then again, you can always uh, say, like, I'm going to watch the M stations first. And tomorrow I'm going to watch uh, the BioLab one. The day after I'm going to watch the M station or, or the tech plant. Or maybe you're like, no, nah, I only need, really need a training in, like, a BioLab. And it's also fine to show your members this it might help them i don't know like i said i can make a more specific uh, video for a biolab if you want or an m station just feel free to ask me like i'm now just doing the general thing so that you kind of get an understanding of what i'm talking about and that like what we were talking about the training as well like the stillmate fights like a 50 50 how do i break out of it most of the time there's no really d pre designed plan for it it's it's improvise as a leader you improvise you basically need to be creative you need to know what you your your people can do and that's why it is harder with a public platoon and obviously with a a platoon of your own outfit okay tech plant tech plants are horrible they are horrible when you do not play organized what do as a defender what do most people do they make sure that as soon as the generator is overloaded, everyone moves there. The other generator is overloaded, everyone moves there. And everyone forgets about that fucking A building. Everyone does. 
it's actually very important in my opinion as a defender to get a Sunday on personal waypoint there in the vehicle bay I think it is really important to get a Sunday there or to get a Sunday right in the middle on top of A so that people can spawn there because if they only get the spawn room option most of them will become spawn room warriors especially because the attack 9 out of 10 times it's coming out of the south so that means that you will immediately be spawn locked and most people don't even realize that if you go towards the back that there is actually a tunnel most people don't even realize it if the jennies are overloaded forget about them they are not important they're not important at all fuck it if you can save it because you got the extra troops sh sure do it maybe design one squad just to focus on, the, on, on on those generators fine do it Make just make sure that you have enough for the A point this building is so crucial and you everything that you can do from the spawn room or this little banana building or the SU room or <coughs> whatever you can also do this from this building so the most standard way of course uh, to defend the tech plant is to go down the tunnels now you, what you need to remember is the enemy knows this so when you when your point is taken and you're using the tunnels they know that you're gonna come out the end right now if you take this one for example this will lead you to this room right here so if you quickly want to get in from the skybox this might be a good exit for you the first one actually so that you can rush them straight up front but they of course think that you're gonna come out of the spawn building so they're not really watching this exit so you can easily make it into the building this is actually something that that Kane and Trident like if I can say that the, the more organized outfits are are doing that now too because the tunnel attack is so or tunnel counter attack is becoming so yeah like predictable you know so that this is a good alternative then you got the second one I'm not gonna show the end one everyone knows the end but this one will take you to this building which is a good building if you want to do it with like heavies and you want to kill some tanks that is a good building to come out of uh, also you can rush with maxes but don't f th this is still a pretty big distance that you have to cover plus inside most of the time they'll by then have a sunday and it, it might rape your entire squad if you're not careful so I would not really advise this one um, and then of course the last one which is the most standard one that people use and that's the end of the tunnel now what I see a lot of people do and I really really want to put this out there they group up right here that's the most stupid thing you can do because they will have darts and attack plan everything so they basically see you gathering up and every second you stay here more people will come towards the vehicle bay to farm you you have to assume that in most cases those vehicle terminals that you see on the minimap they will be hacked so that means that they most likely will have uh, harassers there or sunnies there with furies on top of it and they will just kill you outright the moment you leave this room so if you use this room you need to gather up in the spawn room and then just keep going don't stop as soon as you go up the maxes should of course go first you go up and as infantry you try to push yourself as far forward as possible so that you are not exposed to this railing as long and then you run straight there but don't take that elevator everyone knows that elevator everyone the moment they see that the people have escaped they will camp that elevator don't do it the vehicles will most likely be there so what you need to do is you need to find yourself some cover and find another way up which is very simple there's the tunnel you're now here you need to use this wall to your advantage then you go up towards the other elevator here and this is the better one you get up they don't expect it you don't go straight for the apple no you first go here why they don't expect you coming from here so while some of your people are still trying to get out of the tunnel and they're still trying to kill them they're completely distracted you can just blow them all away right here you get an infiltrator the heck pet the, the, the vehicle terminals then you get two engineers who are ready to quickly spawn a vanguard you blow up the sunnies that are there boom you've killed the squads uh, spawn capability that they had you have cleared the west of the tech plant and then you go towards the A point and there is no point in taking the A point back when you know that the enemy is still all around you it's pointless yeah it's nice to, 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 to troll them a bit and, and, and that sort of thing but it's pointless um, what I also see a lot of times is the gal drops of course also when people need to defend they still do the gal drops 
I am not against this, I think this is good, but I think you should coordinate something like that along with a tunnel attack. Because the moment they see that galaxy, they know that it's going to come from here, they know it's going to come from the balcony right there. And I will actually show you, for those who don't know what, uh, what the galaxy drop means in a minute, but you will come through this door, you will kill whatever is here, probably one or two, but by the time you reach here, those there who are camping the vehicle, they will know. And they will already gather up here, and they will gather up on the other side. Then you got the people in the A point, you're pinned down, you're gonna get grenaded, you're gonna get butt fucked. Why? Because it was not coordinated. So, for example, let's say uh, Reapers and Kane are defending a tech plant. Well, uh, Kane is somewhat smaller than Reapers, obviously, but I think more specialistic. Um, so, in this case, you could have the Reapers basically pull Maxes and Engineers and Light Assaults and Infiltrators and Heavies and Medics, basically rush the end tunnel, really organized, all pushing at once. When they start pushing, I land my gal, I drop my guys, and by the time that the Reapers are almost ready to take the A point, then Kane is basically going to come through those doors securing the balcony and killing whatever is still left on A, so the Reapers have a clear path to A. That's the most important thing. It's not about just throwing some outfits at a facility. It is actually working together to to have that element of surprise. I mean, the gal drops, for example, they don't have to be on the balcony. Everyone does that nowadays. But th the skybox is a good option for a gal drop as well. You know, and with the skybox, I mean basically this area where all the turrets are. I'm going to talk about that now. So that right now we're still talking about defending it. I think that at any time, if you got the squad available, one squad should be always in a skybox. A lot of people forget this. Uh, your turrets will get hacked. They will start shooting at your aircraft. They will start shooting at whatever tanks you still have available. It's a clusterfuck. And it will fuck you up. You need to make sure you keep this under control. You want to have those turrets repaired. And not just repair and leave them. No, use them. For fuck's sake. I mean, if all the AA turrets are men, they come in with a galaxy. That galaxy will be dead before it reaches the A point. These turrets are great. The, all of them are great. Because most of the time you will get attacked from the south. Now look at that view. Look at this view. You can you can easily kill whatever is coming up there, and it's not just one. I mean, you got like three of these turrets. You can place your mana turret here as well to check it out. That gives kind of gives relief to your spawn room, so that the newbies can also get out. On the other side, you can basically check. I will show you that road that you see there. Hardly anyone knows that road, but a lot of Trian members, for example, they do know that road. Chimera, name it. They know that road. And they use it, and they're flanking your armor all the time that way. This turret, you can easily camp it. You can also camp it with the one further down the line. It, it, every turret has its use on this base, which is actually funny because on most bases the turrets aren't that useful, but on uh, Maotech they actually are really useful. Don't forget that you don't have to go through this fucking elevator. That Leave that for the guys who are attacking you. You can always use this. You know, to quickly get downstairs. If you know that the A point is taken, don't go down the elevator. Use this. But first send in one guy that if there are any claymores or whatever, he will, yeah, he will die. But at least the rest of your team will not get damaged. Light assaults can go straight up to the A point. The rest of the people that are not light assaults can come over these stairs. And you're straight at the A point. You can be there really, really quickly. And then once it's defended, just because it were like three or four guys attacking, you can go back to your skybox and you can farm. I had to just take a sip of my coffee there. Now, also here, just like in a biolab, I think light assaults are important, really important, like in, between those walls, of course, like you're attacking the A-point, you're defending the A-point, they have the A-point, you quickly raise yourself, you throw some C4 there, and you're safe, and you blow it up, and you kill a max, maybe. But light assaults can also get in those, those holes there, basically, like there. They can sit there. I'll show you. See? Uh, look at that view. Look at that view. You can kill them before they reach the top level, shit like that. And you can do them on every single one like that. It takes some training, but it's it's a good spot. Especially, again, if you use flash suppressor or, or a suppressor, normal one. Don't forget that you can actually also get an arrestor upstairs. You can park it there up top. And funny enough, if you put an ammo sundae underneath, 
it will actually resupply the arrests that are upstairs so you don't even really need to max out the ammo until of course the sunny gets blown up but i very often park my sunny right here it's not just to check the a point but also to check for balcony rushes we have had like with kane when we had our entire outfit basically well like two squads we had them all sitting on this balcony basically and just farm trying them as they came in and it, w it was amazing uh, it really like you need to be creative there is no one plan there's no one best plan one bad plan whatever so uh, that's for defense basically again i can make it much more advanced i just want to give you a general idea of of how to approach this uh, the tech plan is a big territory but it's only really about a few key corners that you need to have and now for the gal drop that I will show you <coughs> so now we're going to talk about when you're attacking it now a lot of people nowadays either they, they just use sunny still but gals yeah I know that the reapers use a lot of gals but I still miss a lot of outfits that that just go in with Sundays and hope for the best, and it's just ridiculous. But gel drops are so important. But of course, the gel drop is nice, but you need the rest of the NC to move up as well. So you basically get like one platoon to gel drop, and then you need another platoon to basically make sure that there are always Sundays available, shit like that. It needs to be coordinated. But when you're just talking about gel drop, there are like three different gel drops that I support one of them is right here now here we are at the front at the vehicle bay as you can see those are the doors that i was talking about earlier if you maneuver it nicely then they can like get right on but this takes a good galaxy pilot basically to, to get them up here so that, that they are straight on the balcony this is like the fastest way but like i said you need a good gal pilot for that now the more conventional way basically what most people do is to get your galaxy right in this gap you land it and then they basically go to the right and they get down the balcony that way that's the other way to do it do not go towards the skybox make sure you people know this they will most likely often go towards the skybox which is in front of me but you need to make sure that they go on the other side and the third spot where there's a lot of gal drops always is of course on top of the skybox if you're attacking I actually promote this one the most especially if you're a, a specialistic squad like you have an infiltrator engineers and shit take that skybox use their own weapons against them you only need one gal drop here only one squad the other ones can drop on the balcony if you want of course but this is an important one they need to hack those terminals downstairs they need to hack the weapon bases you need to take this a building completely before the enemy really knows what's going on then of course you know what to camp so as a defender obviously they're going to try well I can actually show you see girls here lol so yeah so they will of course come from these teleporters now what you only thing you need to know is like this is the teleporter I'm talking about and this is the teleporter they use to get into this one so if you have a nice little dart here you know exactly when he's gonna come you just set up here with a max unit or with an engineer turret you basically just camp that room same goes for the south one that obviously is this room and it leads to that room and the third of course what a lot of newbies will do they will come down the elevator and you can just sit here with a decent carbine and you can just snipe them as they come up it's easy and you can have you like you have one person checking that one you have one person checking that one then maybe two people like the medics probably that that camp this and for the rest you can have the rest of you guys all on the turrets and it's best of course to focus on the same target uh, just so basically the people watching these terminals should basically shut up on TeamSpeak until they're really getting rushed by a max or whatever but you could see that on the radar anyway so it doesn't really matter okay so that's for the skybox that to take that obviously I, we have this base so I can just use this teleporter uh, now you might ask yourself yeah okay so where do I park my Sunday well in our case right now of course you're either gonna attack from my watchtower most of the time if you lose it so 
where do you park your sun? Not near the generators. If you do it near the generators, people are going to camp there. They're not going to move up. So you want to like, park a Sunday there, for example. Or you want to park a Sunday there. But get them away from the generator. Make sure it is actually close to the vehicle bay. Why? So that they can farm the vehicles that come out. But you might say, yeah, well, Mark, for fuck's sake, the entrance is in the back if the shields are not down. So what the fuck? Yes, that is true. But if you will park your son here, I'll guarantee you that most people will just hang around that generator right there and they will not do a thing. So, and you can still get in as a light assault and otherwise you're just going to have to walk around. And the funny thing is, once that whole stream of people is going and going and going and coming in, it doesn't really matter. Because then, once it's on the way, it's fine. At the same time, if anything, they're actually stopping people, getting enemies, to get in the building in the first place. So it's alright. It doesn't really matter. It's all about your outfit being inside that building. You cannot count on the newbies. The only thing you can count on is that they will die. So they might as well do it in a useful spot like here, rather than dying in these fucking generator rooms. Just leave it be. And like I said, again, there, this is not just the plan. There are so many plans, but I think that this is, this is what I would normally, most commonly use. So there you have it um, now for th th attacking this is simple it's either a gal drop or do it with sunnies you can also use GSD sunnies to get in but that's the basic thing uh, th it's not hard watch out for mines uh, if you're defending as well play some mines along this uh, road here basically they will not see it because of the shield they will get on top of it and it's done so also, if Mao was under attack, think outside of the box. You know the enemy is going to come from here. So pull some tanks from southwest, flank it over the south and kick them in the ass. Spawn some air. They will only have two AA turrets here and that's it. Be creative. I just showed you the most basic things about the tech plan. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, ask me. And I have so many more things that, that I can show you. But this video is getting way too fucking long now. So I hope you get a better idea of the tech plan now as well. So yeah, if you need uh, any other bases explained, or like, or you want me to go in depth more, like for example a tower fight on what you should do there and the good spots, I also can show you the good spots in the Mao tech plan rather than just the light assault spot that I showed you, uh, or in the bio lab or in the M station. Uh, let me know. I I know a lot about this game, so feel free to uh, contact me obviously and uh, I hope this video has helped you. Uh, there you go, see you later.